have a great appetite for great appetizers, don't you? If you don't, you'll change your mind by the end of this show. For starters, we're gonna make shrimp with orange mustard sauce. This particular dish, all you need is shrimp and the dressing, and then you can bake them. It's very easy to do. Here, I have a shrimp. I wanna quickly show you how easy it is to remove the shrimp, the shell of the shrimp, without removing the tail. Okay, look, one, two, look at this, very easy. Then you remove it right here, then the tail is still perfectly intact. The shrimp may lose its head, but never its tails. I want to show you how quickly to devein a shrimp, to butterfly a shrimp. Look at this, you curl it like this, and you cut it quickly, like that. And then you can see, when you open it up, you can see the vein right here. So you can remove the vein, remove the wing. Okay, do it in running tap water. Otherwise, you just do it right here. Okay, when this is done, I want to show you how easy. You can cook, the, broil the shrimp or bake the shrimp like this, or show you. Or you can twist this, this way. The tail, tuck it inside, you have something like this. It looks very, very interesting. Look at this. See this? Normal looking. Marvelous looking. <laughs> Look at that. When this is done, we're going to marinate our shrimp in the following marinade. Look at this. We have shrimp right over here. Okay? We have shrimp. Some of them are marvelous looking, and some of them are just ordinary looking. And we put them all together. We're going to marinate the shrimp with one tablespoon of soy sauce with a tablespoon of dry sherry, and with a teaspoon of sesame seed oil, and also some cornstarch, about a tablespoon or so, and also use a tiny, tiny bit of juice. This is, save it for the other thing, because you want to make the sauce. Use a tiny, tiny bit of lime juice if you want, but not necessary. Mix them all up, okay? And then we're gonna bake the shrimp right now. In this, cookie sheet. We have line them all up. One, two, three, four. Fine. Ordinary one on one side, nice looking one on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. This way, we are going to bake it. Now, everybody know, in China, in a traditional Chinese kitchen, there's no oven. Just ask my mother. She is the Betty Crocker of China. She knows everything about cooking. While you're baking that, you should make the sauce right now. So in this, I'm gonna put all this sauce together. This is orange marmalade. And we're gonna put mustard. We're gonna put the mustard. This is approximately, look at this. This is gonna be a dipping sauce. I would have about three tables of orange marmalade about two teaspoons of mustard. I developed this particular sauce a couple weeks ago. I accidentally spilled the mustard on my marmalade. <laughs> and then also use about two tablespoons or so of this lime juice, okay? Make sure, put them, mix sure, and also use about one to two tablespoons of soy sauce. Now this is a little bit small, so it's kind of difficult to move them around. So we're gonna do it in a bowl right here, okay? So everybody can see better. Ooh, look at this. This is what you call looking good, tastes good. Mix it up. Chopstick is a very good cooking utensil. This is what you call chopstick exercise. You can get totally exhausted. In the meantime, we are going to check our shrimp, make sure the shrimp is okay. Now, it's very, very important. When you cook shrimp, never, never overcook the shrimp. Because if you overcook the shrimp, it will not be very, very good. <sighs> very, even though you get excited, never, never do that. When this is done, you put it right over here, and you start putting this in. Ordinary ones, put it over here. Look at this. 
ordinary one. You bake it for approximately six to seven minutes or until done, okay? Make sure, as I said, make sure you don't overcook it. When you overcook it, it will taste as delicious as this. Dry and tough, chew your jaws off. Now, put them all together. The good ones, lay them out nicely, right in the center. So this is a marvelous dish. Now, oh, this is a hot. I love, I love Thai restaurants. That's why I want to show you a very popular, simple Thai dish. This is what I call the Thai cucumber salad, okay? All you need is cucumber. This is English cucumber. You can use a regular cucumber. <laughs> See, no problem. Cool as in cucumber. Okay, cucumber is done. A lot of people always say, when I cut onion, I get emotionally involved because you're too slow. <laughs> this way you can never get emotionally involved because you don't know what's going on. You put it over here and then red bell pepper. Look at this. Give color contrast and also some sweetness to it. We're gonna put all of these in this wonderful looking bowl because we're gonna mix them all up and make it into a salad, okay? Here is all, give you color contrast and flavor contrast and textural contrast. Here, we're gonna make a dressing. Look at all the ingredients I have. I also have quarter of a cup, four ounces of Cook shrimp, put them all together, mix them all up. This will make the dish look good. And this particular dressing, I have three tablespoons of lime juice. Look at this, lime juice, freshly squeezed lime juice. And also, I have one tablespoon of garlic, okay? One tablespoon of garlic, a teaspoon of dry crushed chili, and about one teaspoon of sesame seed oil, and about one to two tablespoons of fish sauce, and also some sugar. This is all you need. Or maybe a little bit more. Just stop right here. And then also some chopped cilantro. Cilantro is marvelous because you know why? Cilantro got that nice minty taste. Maybe one day they're gonna put it in your mouth wash. Okay, look at this. When you toss, it, it looks marvelous. I just taste my Thai cucumber salad. It tastes terrific. For starters, the newlyweds in China share these marvelous bridal cakes with all their guests and relatives. Here is a typical wedding cake. Sometimes they have winter melon filling. Sometimes they have black bean filling, black bean paste. And this is a Chiu Jiao wedding cake, and they have white lotus seed paste filling. And here you have the curry beef turnover. Here I have something very interesting, barbecue pastry. And also this is a pastry inside there, it's thousand year old egg. This egg has been here for at least 3,000 years. And here, this is the Buddha's cookie. Buddha's cookie. You can hang the little kids running around in mid autumn festival. And this is the fish cookie. Looks nice. And here we come to the mid autumn moon festival. Moon cake. Double egg yolk. The whole thing looks like this. When you cut it up, it looks like this. These are all my very, very favorite pastry. Wasn't that marvelous wedding cake? Beautiful. In China, marriage is actually a piece of cake. <laughs> now, the next dish I'm going to show you is something very, very exciting. It's very easy to do, but all your family members would like it. 
I'm going to cook glazed Sichuan chicken wing. All I have is a chicken wing right here, and I'm going to cut this up right in half right here, and also remove the tip because already in this particular dish we do not tip, so remove the tip. <laughs> and then we'll put everything over here, and we're going to marinate the wing. Okay, here I have one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice wine or dry sherry or any white wine, and also a tiny bit of dash of white pepper. Mix them all up. When you use white pepper, make sure you do not breathe too hard. Otherwise, you're going to have to sneeze like that. Make sure, set it aside and marinate for about half an hour or so. These are nice looking wings. They are not those fly by night type. <laughs> Heat this up. Make sure we're going to brown this first. Heat up the wok. Put a tiny bit of oil. We're going to get a tiny bit of oil right here. OK? This is what you call a tiny bit. Make sure. To brown this, you need a tiny bit of ginger. And to make it nice and hot and spicy, Sichuan style, you use this red chili pepper, OK? When you do the red chili pepper, don't stand too close. Don't breathe, because when you stir fry this chili pepper, it stings your nose and your eyes. Unless you have one of these high-tech kitchen devices. Do not, do not brown this. Do not breathe. You can get suffocated by doing this dish. And then, put the rest of the sauce for braising. We have brown sugar. Okay, look at this. Look at all of these ingredients. We have chicken broth. One third of a cup to one half a cup of chicken broth. About two tablespoons of brown sugar. And also one to two tablespoons of wine. And use some soy sauce. You can use regular soy sauce or dark soy sauce. One to two tablespoons. Put one or two slices of green onion. If you want to make it more traditional, more interesting, use extra crushed chili. And extra Sichuan peppercorn. This is what makes it really Sichuan. Sprinkle this here. This will be so much. It will give me and give you a permanent perm for six months. It will smoke your hair. You don't believe me, you tried it too nice. When this is nice and ready, make sure that, see, they're nice and brown, and we'll let it brace over low heat for approximately 25 minutes. I said low heat, not high heat, not medium heat, okay? Put them all together, and then you cover this up. For so many people, we have cooked something in this twin wok right in front of you. And this way, we can have enough for everybody to try. A lot of people don't really know that I have been eating these chicken wings long before they became buffalo wings. In fact, in China, they actually called it water buffalo wings. <laughs> now, when this is nice and ready, we take this out with a strainer. This way, you can pick up everything simultaneously. Look at this. Also, you can use a tong, or you can use a Chinese tong. So you one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. You can garnish it any way you want, as long as it looks good, okay? Now. So I want to show you how easy it is to do another dish. It's called Shanghai smoke or Shanghai fish. This is what you call chill fish, Shanghai style, okay? 
This particular dish, everybody can do at home because you can do it ahead of time. You don't have to do it in the last minute. In fact, we have been doing this in the past 2,000 years in Shanghai. All you have is about one pound of this nice firm fish. Very easy to do. All you have to do is score this a little bit. One, two, three, four. Today, we are being Shanghai. I don't understand it because in China, you don't say, hey, guys, we have been New York. <laughs> a strange expression. S score this a little bit on both sides so the marinade will get in much easier. In the meantime, I quickly, quickly marinate the fish with the following ingredient. Look at this. We have one minced garlic. Ah, done. And then minced the garlic, and we have a tiny bit of ginger. Minced ginger. Ah, done. Minced ginger. Also three tablespoons of soy sauce. Look at the soy sauce. And also three tablespoons of dry sherry. Look at this. Tiny bit of brown sugar. Mix them all up. And also some five spice powder. Sprinkle them around. Let it marinate. After you marinate it for about two to three hours, turn them around every 30 seconds if you have time. Otherwise, turn them around every three minutes or half an hour, or even two hours makes no difference. When it's done for the marinade, you are going to put this into this baking pan, okay? We're going to take it to the oven, and we are going to bake this in the oven. Mm, look at this. Okay, now, in the meantime, save this juice, okay? Save this juice, and you can kind of Drain it through this nice wire, fine wire basket. And then you can bring it to a boil. And then you can use the sauce to season your fish. Now, this is how beautiful. We have some sauce already made. You put it around here. The fish has been chewed. And I want to show you how to garnish this very simply. You cut the fish at an angle like this. One, two, three. Four, and then you line the fish. One, look at this. Two, three, four. Look at how beautiful this is. And then you use the leftover marinade, thicken it up, and you put it right on top. You have a gorgeous chill fish, Shanghai style. Fish is a very important part of a lot of Chinese celebration, and we celebrate. Everything. When I was a kid growing up in China, I loved to get involved in all kinds of festivals. Everybody's favorite festival of course, it's the Chinese New Year celebration with red money envelopes for the children and fireworks for everybody else. The Qingming Festival is when the living remember their ancestors with offerings of food and prayer. We celebrate Tinhao with parades. It was fun. This kid seems a bit grumpy. Maybe he skipped his afternoon nap to come to the festival. During the bun festival, we make special steam buns. And of course, children are the main attraction during the parade. But my favorite is the mid-autumn festival, when we enjoy a variety of mooncakes and have a good time under the stars. The great thing about the festival is that we have a lot of food and lots of fun. Now we're going to make more food for more fun. The next one I'm going to do is marble tea egg. Now, you ask, where do marble eggs come from? Maybe from this uh, brew marble chicken? In Shanghai, late night snack. Everybody go out to the street and buy these marble tea eggs. Tonight, after Johnny Carson, 8 million people say, geez, I really can use a marble tea egg tonight. 
all I have to do is get all these tea liquid ready to cook the marble tea egg. Parboil your egg, depends on how many people. Get ready some ginger, put it here, a couple slices of ginger, a couple slices of green onion, put them all together, bring this to a boil, and put approximately a quarter of a cup of fermented tea leaf. Put it right in here, and also brown sugar, quarter of a cup of brown sugar, okay? And also some regular soy sauce or dark soy sauce. Use about a quarter of a cup of dark and a quarter cup of regular soy sauce. And also use some five spice powder, and also some star anise and cinnamon stick. Can you see the star anise? It looks like a star. And then bring it to a boil, and then you can start cracking the hot boiled egg. How can you tell the hot boiled egg is hot boiled? You swing it like this, stay. And then you can start cracking it. For all this studio audience, we really need a lot of hot boiled egg. Fortunately, I have two able assistants, Sean House and Eleanor Goodwine, to come over here and give me a hand. Let's come over here. Let's crack some more eggs, okay? Sean, I'm gonna give Sean a big promotion. Sean, come over here so everybody can see Sean. <laughs> all we have to do is get ready to the egg. Okay, here are all hot boiled eggs. Make sure you start cracking it, start cracking it, because we need to get hurry up because we got a lot of people. We only have about two minutes. You cannot do this too slow, Sean, too slow. I don't know, too slow. All right. Sean, that is really fast. <laughs> I am impressed. I, why, should, why didn't I think of this earlier? Oh. Every day you learn something new. Let's crack some more. All right. Let's crack some more. After we crack, we'll put it over here. I don't know, you should crack one too, okay? Make sure you crack some egg. Make sure everybody crack. When it's done, let's all put over here. I don't know, you really crack me up. <laughs> let's, when it's done, you put it right over here. Let's put all the egg right over here. Let's put all the egg. Oh, this is safe for you, okay? When this is done, move them around. Make sure they are cooked properly. When they're done, we'll scoop out the one has been here for a little while. You should let it cook for a little while. Make sure they're done. And then we're gonna crack this open. Look at this, let's open this up. And then we can serve this right over here. Let's open this up, open this up. Let's open it up and put it over there. This is a marvelous, great dish for meat nice snack. Yeah, Look at yeah, this. Right. It looks very, very good. And you'll put them right over here. Okay, look at that. Isn't that marble? Look marvelous. And it tastes marvelous. Let's put them all over here. Let's put them all over here. This one's cool. Okay, look at this. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to cut it open and see how it looks, okay? Look at this. Wow, look at this. One, this is one for you. And tell me Thank whether you. you like it or not. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, taste it, taste it, because we are here and we still have enough to, look at this. Mmm, <laughs> very good. They say they are proof. Mmm, very good too. Now, let's crack some more because we have so many people around. Okay. Let's mix some more. Everybody can enjoy, okay? This way, everybody have a good time. Marble egg party. Now, we will cut up one more egg. So everybody, look at this. Everybody can see this, okay? Cut it up. Look at this. Everybody can see this. Once again, try it. Eleanor and Sean, try it one more time. See, everybody cooks differently. They have their own unique style. Sean and Eleanor did a wonderful job. And we'll see you next time. Remember, if Yen can cook, so can Sean and Eleanor. Join in.